this video is guaranteed to help at least one person and that's really just my goal so here it is i have hyperhidrosis which is basically just a fancy word for excessive sweating well not a fancy word it's the medical term i've been dealing with hyperhidrosis for a really really long time it wasn't until like freshman year of high school that it really started to interfere like with my day-to-day -day life it really affected my self-esteem and just like my self-image if you have hyperhidrosis you know how big of a deal it is but if you don't have it then it sounds like a very trivial problem like oh you sweat that's everyone sweats that's fine it's not like the normal sweating the normal conditions in which people sweat are like heat stressful situations you're working out you're running around but when you have hyperhidrosis it's slightly different you are sweating every day every hour of the day it's not like oh it's hot let me start sweating it could be fucking the coldest day of winter and you will still catch me sweating with sweat stains and like literal sweat dripping down my arms the external factors does not matter at all when you have hyperhidrosis because you're just bound to sweat in high school i was so insecure of like being labeled as the sweaty girl because i'd be running around school with like sweat stains and I do everything in my power to like hide them I come up with excuses like oh my god I would have extra shirts in my locker I would like just pass things to my friends and they touch the bottle and they'd be like why is it wet and I'd be like oh yeah like I just put on hand sanitizer like oh yeah I just washed my hands you know I was the king of coming up with excuses and it sucked because I really enjoy fashion I love dressing up I couldn't wear certain colors I couldn't wear certain style shirts it got to a point where like you could even see my sweat stains through black clothes white clothes it wasn't just gray it was literally every color of the rainbow that I just couldn't wear especially in high school I didn't know shit about hyperhidrosis I didn't know how common it was I never heard people talking about it I really thought it was just me being a sweaty girl like I didn't know it was an actual thing that you could get treated so I would buy these like sweat pads these are literally like pads or like panty liners for your shirts you put these like in the armpit of your shirt so that it can soak up any like moisture coming from your armpit I lived off of these like I had 20 in my locker 20 in my bag these were my lifesavers I'll link them down below you can buy them on Amazon other products I used were these sweat blocking like antiperspirants you put both of these on before you go to bed like at night and then you're supposed to wake up supposedly you're not gonna sweat for like 8 to 12 hours the next day this is really what helped me the most this i really recommend if you can't get botox if that's not available to you you need this granted they would work but it never was good enough like it never took the problem away i still was very much a sweaty person i don't know if this is how it is for all hyperhidrosis cases for me personally my sweat never had a scent it was more of just like moisture and dampness and like literal water drops or like sweat drops it didn't have an odor it didn't have that smell that's why it was really hard for me to be like open about my hyperhidrosis because I don't want to like tell someone I have a sweating condition and then have them think that like I'm this smelly, sweaty, dirty person because that's not the case. Like that's not the case at all. But I also don't want to sit there and have to like explain to you in detail how my hyperhidrosis works. Like I just want to be able to tell you and you deal with it, like accept it and just be fine with it. And my real friends, my true friends, my genuine friends, they obviously were very accepting and they were very like supportive. There were obviously people who did not respond well and they thought it would be funny to make jokes about it and laugh about it. But it's kind of like if someone's telling you their insecurity and a problem and a literal medical condition that they've struggled with for years and then you go and make jokes and like laugh about it. It's just like, get a fucking life, you fucking lame loser freak. Anyway, I really do think that we need to start talking more and more about these conditions and these problems that we encounter in our day-to-day -day lives because, I mean, had there been someone talking about hyperhidrosis throughout high school, I probably would have felt so much different and so much better about myself. End of high school, I started telling my best friends. I started telling people that I just met, like just to get it out of the way. I was like, if you know about it, then you know that I'm not a sweaty person. It's just a medical problem that I have. So it kind of took the blame away from me in a way. It just made me feel better 
that people finally knew and that I, it wasn't like a secret that I had to hide. It wasn't something that I had to conceal. I started posting TikToks about hyperhidrosis. It was only after I started becoming vocal about hyperhidrosis that I found out that Botox was the treatment for it. I got my Botox treatment done here in New York at this dermatologist called Orange Reich Medical Group. Shout out Dr. Jody. She is literally like my lifesaver. I am forever indebted to her because she really just changed my life. I've had this condition for so many years that not having to deal with this problem anymore is like so much weight lifted off my shoulders. It's a huge inconvenience and I didn't want to deal with it anymore. It basically, I got to a point where I was like, I can't, I can't take this anymore. So I went and got Botox. We're about to put the numbing cream on and then I have to wait like 10, 15 minutes for it to kick in, right? Exactly. Swiping you down with some alcohol. Okay, and now I want you to just gently put your arm down so it squishes in a little oh, bit. Oh, yeah, there you go. So I just mark you to see where we're at. All right, you ready? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so it works by blocking the transmitters that signal your glands to produce sweat. So when I come in two weeks, do we do like a re-injection or is that just like a checkup? We're gonna see how good it is, like how much it kicked in. You just say overall, I think I need a little more. We'll do it. You're good. That's it? It's gonna kick in at, like it'll peak in about seven days or so. As it starts to kick in, you'll feel less and less sweaty. Sometimes as it's kicking in, your hand can feel a little weak. Almost feels weird. Goes away. Okay. It peaks at about 10 days, but I'm gonna see you in two weeks. Okay. Two and weeks. we'll see if you need more. We just wrapped up the treatment. It was really quick. They like put on the numbing cream for 10 to 15 minutes. I waited, I went on TikTok, and then she came in. Each armpit took about like, I wanna say three minutes. Yeah, I'm feeling great. It's supposed to be like a week before it kicks in. I waited three years for this. I will be more than happy to wait another week to not be able to sweat. I'm so excited. Today is checkup day. It's been two weeks since the first injection and today we're gonna go see like what's going on. did not shave <laughs> i don't think i gave like a full update as to like how the treatment went so i got my first injection which was 50 milligrams on each i think like 50 units it reduced it by like i want to say 50 percent i wore that white shirt and the armpits are like you can see that they're wet so i'm just one sweaty girl up. what can i say <laughs> The standard procedure, I guess, for getting like Botox for hyperhidrosis is 50 units of Botox per armpit. So it's 100 in total. The procedure is really short. It took about like 20 minutes. I want to say like 10 to 15 for the numbing cream to kick in. And then the remaining time was for the injections. And the numbing cream really works because I could not feel any of the injections, especially on the first round of treatment that I got. I didn't even know that she had started until she asked me, like, are you okay? I was like, oh. Okay, I didn't even know you had begun, but cool. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm chilling. The needles are like pretty pretty thin. You don't feel it. Basically what happens is you go in, they numb you up, they mark you as to like where they're going to put the injections and then they inject you and then you're done. So my dermatologist, Dr. Dodi, told me that it would take about four to six days to kick in and then the 10th day is like peak effectiveness. That's when it's like really just starting but she said that i would start seeing the results in like four to five days which is pretty true i did see a decrease in sweating within the first few days of getting the treatment as for the side effects the main things that they list or that they tell you that you could experience are like fatigue maybe even a cold just like arm soreness just like being sore i didn't necessarily get a cold i wasn't necessarily fatigued but I was sore, like my armpits felt like they had been punched, uh, which wasn't, you know, it wasn't the best, but hey, 
if it means I'll stop sweating, you can punch me, you can actually punch me in the armpit and I'm fine. Another side effect which I found to be really interesting and just amusing was kind of like tingliness and like numbness. You know if you sleep on your arm, it'll start feeling like numb and tingly and like just pins and needles. So yeah, that actually did happen to both of my arms. I like woke up from a nap one night and my arms were tingling and that's also like how you know you're getting a heart attack like your arm will start to tingle and i was like am i <laughs> am i about to have a stroke and then i remembered that she told me that i would get this like weird feeling in my arms and that i shouldn't panic and that i wasn't getting a heart attack that it was just the botox and i was like okay cool two weeks after your first round of injections you're supposed to go back to your dermatologist and they do a little check-in if you're really sweaty then you're gonna need more and if you're not as sweaty then you're not gonna need more it's very patient dependent so i was very sweaty so the first round of treatment like i said earlier in the video it did decrease it by like 50 percent but i was still sweating two weeks after i went back i got another round of treatment and then i was done that was pretty much the treatment. It's been, I want to say like a month since my second round of treatment and it's been amazing. Oh my God. Like guys, it's so amazing. Like if this is a problem that you've dealt with for so long, it is worth the money that you're spending. The Botox isn't necessarily supposed to like stop you from sweating altogether. It's not like I'm completely dry. But I feel like I sweat like the average person now or maybe even a little less than the average person. I most definitely will leave my dermatologist information in my bio so that if you're in New York and you want the treatment, you can get it done. Hit up Dr. Jody, she's the best. If you guys have any questions, please, please, please DM me, leave them in the comments. I will do everything in my power to respond because I know what it feels like to be in this situation where you don't know anything about the problem you're going through. I will be your bigger sister. I will be your older sister. I will help you through this because I wish that there was someone that could have helped me, someone that could have told me like, hey, this is this, this is that, this is what you can do. I wish there was a guide like that, but I didn't have one. But now I know that I can be the guide. That's my little spiel. Thanks for listening to me talk about sweating, Botox, and hyperhidrosis for like 20 minutes. Appreciate it. Bye.